Hello, how are you doing? It is getting to be book prize season for 2021. Yay! <laughs> As many of you probably know, I like to follow lots of different book prizes. And uh, so we've had a number of them uh, already this year. The Rathbones Folio Prize announced their long list. And a month or so time, uh, we're going to get lists for the Women's Prize and the International Booker Prize. And at the very beginning of the year, there was the category winners for the Cost of Book Awards. Um, which were announced and in the category that I judged in the first novel category, uh, Ingrid Persaud won for Love After Love uh, and this is such an amazing novel so yeah I was so happy that uh, this was our winner and uh, then of course in the Costa Book Awards each category goes against each other and an overall winner is announced um, at the end of January and there was an online ceremony uh, for that um, this year obviously because there couldn't be a physical ceremony and and uh, that was really fun to, to watch. And uh, the overall winner of the Costa Book Awards was The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Rafi, um, which I was so happy to, to see because um, I loved reading this novel last year. And uh, it's such a brilliant book. I've read a number of her books before. She's uh, such a fascinating writer, um, writes on a number of different subjects and, uh, and, and uses such an interesting form in her writing. Um, so yeah, I was so happy to see this win. And this leads on very neatly into the actual book prize that I want to discuss in this video, because um, just yesterday, the long list for the Republic of Consciousness Prize uh, was announced. And this is a really interesting award. Um, so it's been running, this is the fifth year that it's been running. It was started in 2017. And this is a book prize uh, exclusively for small presses. Um, and how how it defines that is um, by any publisher that has five or less full-time employees in it. And as many of us probably know, uh, some of the most interesting writing that comes out is through small presses. So I think it's really fantastic that there's an award exclusively for this. And um, and it's usually it's quite um, difficult um, for small presses to submit books um, for the larger book prizes because a lot of times um, it's quite a like big financial and um, time commitment and a lot of small presses don't necessarily have the finances or the time to really devote to putting books forward for prizes like this. Um, but um, so so it's great that there's a whole award that's just um, about this. And uh, so there are 10 books long listed um, for this year's prize. And the um, the award was set up by Neil Griffiths, um, who's an author um, who um, also was on uh, YouTube and had an active YouTube channel. But I don't think um, his channel has been updated for a couple of years now. But um, but yeah, he started the prize and um, and and runs it. And uh, and they also run a subscription service uh, through the Republic of Consciousness Prize, where you can sign up to receive a new book by an independent press, um, either every month, um, every two months, or every three months. And I think they deliver to most places in the world. So I'll put a link down below to to the prize because um, that's uh, I I've been wanting to um, subscribe to more subscription services like that because I think it's so fun to. to to receive a book, you know, out of the blue that you don't know um, what it necessarily is, but it's been sort of handpicked for you. So anyway, I think this is a really great and interesting award. And uh, yeah, and I'm really interested in the, the long list. And uh, one of the books that is long listed for this year's prize is The Mermaid of Black Conch. Um, and uh, and it's interesting how I think it, it tends to be because it's books um, by small presses. Uh, a lot of the books they are, are nominated, that are nominated, um, tend to be slightly um, more experimental in form or, or have a different form, you know, than sort of traditional narratives. And, you know, and this is a story which is really inventive in how it brings together uh, sort of mythology and this modern day story and a sort of like social commentary about the history of colonialism in the Caribbean. Um, but um, moreover, it's just a wonderful story about a mermaid that's, uh, that's caught off the coast of a Caribbean island, a fictional Caribbean island, 
and um, by American tourists and uh, a fisherman sort of rescues this mermaid and then the story goes on from there. It's a, like beautiful romance. It's quite a sexy story, um, but also really a number of different fascinating characters in it and how the story plays out is quite thrilling. And uh, yeah, and I just, I love this novel so much. And so, um, so yeah, I'm so happy to see it get even more attention, um, you know, than just the, the Costa Book Awards. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy about this nomination. Uh, then also nominated for the prize is The Appointment by Katharina Volkmer. Um, this is the, the only other book that I've read from the long list for this prize. And uh, this is a really fascinating, um, quite a short book, um, which is basically an extended monologue about a German woman um, who's seen a doctor in London. And uh, at first, it sort of feels like he's a therapist and she's just sort of talking to him about her, her life and her past and her feelings and her fantasies. Uh, but then it um, takes on more like sinister implications and it's and it's not you're never exactly sure who this doctor is or what this appointment is is about and that's really tense and fascinating how that that's brought out but yeah it's a really interesting look at uh, sort of national identity and sexual identity and um, and our the position our position in our family um, so she talks about a number of different relationships she's had um, but also yeah about her family's past and uh, and yeah it's just a really fascinating compelling story and uh, this this novel has a subtitle uh, which is uh, the appointment or the story of a cock so <laughs> it's a uh, yeah it's quite um really fascinating book and I'm really glad to see it get uh, more attention through this award I forgot to mention Mentioned that the prize has a really interesting group of judges. Uh, so one of the judges um, for this year's prize is Ellie Williams, uh, the author of Atrib um, that won uh, this prize a couple of years ago. And I just read uh, finally uh, the short story collection towards the end of last year um, alongside reading Ellie Williams' debut novel, The Liar's Dictionary, um, which was such a wonderful novel. And these stories are so like fascinating in their, their form and the subject matter she's talking about and they're really funny and relatable um, as, as well and it's very 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 playful with language um, so that's really excellent. Another one of the judges is Guy Garante um, who uh, was uh, long listed for the, the Booker Prize um, a couple of years ago and uh, John Mitchinson um, the publisher and he's a co-host of a great um, literary podcast uh, called Backlisted Books and uh, and yeah he's a publisher at Unbound um, so yeah it's a really great group of judges that have um, selected the list for this year's prize. So I'm just looking through the other eight books um, that are on the long list and it's great on the, um, the the prizes website. They have links through to all of the um, the small independent presses um, so you can buy the books directly from those publishers. And uh, yeah, it's a really fascinating group of books on the list. So uh, one of the books is A Ghost in the Throat by Dorian Ni Grafoa. Um, um, I've, I've probably mispronounced that. Sorry, it's a, it's an Irish name, and um, this sounds like a really interesting narrative, which is a dual story about a 18th century noble Irish noblewoman whose husband was murdered, and she mourns his loss by drinking his blood and writing an epic poem, um, which becomes one of the greatest poems in Irish literature. But it's also about a uh, 21st century mother who's reading about this woman from the past and sort of connecting with her in various ways and yeah I've I've had a copy of this on my shelves and have been wanting to to read it and actually it's up on my sort of to be read shelf but but uh, there's quite a lot of books on my immediate to be read um, shelf and some of them have been there for quite a long time I think some of these novels have been there for like a few years um, because I know some of the the writers that are on this shelf um, have subsequently had a new book out but uh, anyway Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll show a picture of that, that shelf. And uh, and also on that shelf is Mordew by Alex Felby, which is another book on the, the long list. And uh, this was published uh, by Galley Beggar Press, who's a really great independent press. And uh, and this is um, proposed to be, I think, the first volume in a, in a proposed tr trilogy. It's a literary fantasy um, story. And I've talked about this as a novel I really wanted to, to read before, and I meant to read 
in the autumn when it came out, uh, but it's a very long novel. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I just didn't get around to it yet, but I'm hoping to, to read it soon. So it's described as a sprawling mordant vision of a world built on the corpse of God. And the story follows a young boy from a uh, impoverished family whose mother sells him to the master of Mordu, where he goes to, to stay with him. And yeah, it just sounds like such a creepy kind of gothic type story. So I'm really looking forward to getting to that. Then there is the novel A Musical Offering by Luis Sagasti, translated uh, by Fion Patch. And uh, this is an Argentinian uh, writer, and it's really difficult to summarize what this novel is about. Um, I'm just going to read the description because I don't think I can just yeah, quickly summarize it without having read it myself. Um, so it says, I'm tracing a circular course that echoes Box Goldberg variations in Louis Sagasti's second book to appear in English, he takes on the role of Sherizade to recount us story after story interwoven in subtle and surprising ways to create a tapestry that vibrates to celestial harmonies. He leads us on a journey from music born of the sun to the music sent into space on the Voyager mission, from Rothko to rock music, from the composers of the concentration camps to a weeping room for Argentinian conscripts in the Falklands. So yeah, it sounds like a really fascinating um, book. I'm not quite sure what to expect of it. Um, the, the prize summarizes it as uh, this rich and complex book that is the second by Argentina Argentinian writer Luis Sagasti to have been published in translation by Charco Press. Uh, like the first Fireflies, it is unclassifiable in the best possible way, braiding together memoir, history, science, fable, musical criticism, and anthropology in a way that summons the ghosts of both Sebald and Borges, but with a poise and originality that is all Sagasti's own. There is Mr. Beethoven by Paul Griffiths, um, which was also listed for the Goldsmiths Prize last year, um, actually alongside uh, The Mermaid of Black Conch, um, which was also listed for the Goldsmiths Prize last year. And uh, and yeah, and this novel um, is also sort of about music. So one reviewer describes it as, Mr. De Beethoven is a novel about interpretation, about how a writer might go about interpreting the life of one of the most well-known composers who ever lived, uh, but also about the role interpretation plays in creativity of all kinds. It is also, like much of Griffith's work, a riddling, playful, and often very funny investigation of literary form, and a demonstration of the unexpected liberation that can emerge from self-imposed constraints. Next is a book I've not heard of before, uh, but has two authors credited on it, um, though I think one of those authors has been long deceased. Uh, it's Unknown Language by Hugh Lemmy and Hildegard von Bingen, and uh, it's published by Ignata Books, and reading the summary on the publisher's website, it's quite difficult to uh, summarize and try to encapsulate what um, what it's about. So I'm just going to read the description uh, from the, the prize about this, this novel. So it says, uh, Unknown Language is a highly textured and intense work of collaboration and vitality. While in part a meditation upon the work of 12th century mystic, Hildegard von Bingen, it is also a bold retreatment of her vision through pro poetic fragment, narrative, and hybrid writing. It is difficult to describe, and quite right too, a revelation on revelation. Lot by Sheila von Reinhold. This sounds sort of similar to Ghost in the Throat in the, the way that it's um, someone in the present day uh, meditating on the, the work and writings of someone in the past. Uh, so this is described as a literary novel which follows present day narrator Matilda's fixation with the forgotten black Scottish modernist poet Hermia Druitt. Lot is an exploration of aesthetics, beauty, and the ephemeral reality in which they exist. And it's described as lush and frothy, incisive and witty, Shola von Reinhold's decadent queer literary debut immerses readers in the pursuit of aesthetics and beauty while interrogating the removal and obscurement of black figures from history. I think that sounds absolutely fascinating. Men and Apparitions by 
Lynn Tillman. I like how uh, the publisher Peninsula Press um, introduces this book on the, the website. So it says, meet Ezekiel Hooper Stark, cultural anthropologist and bemused commentator on the contemporary world. Zeke has carved out an academic career studying family photographs, gender and images. Meanwhile, now 38, he still contends with his own family's perversities and pathologies which charge his chaotic love life. While living in London, Zeke finds himself spiraling into crisis. As the centre ceases to hold, so too does any pretense of his having a dispassionate, purely academic interest in these issues. And George Saunders describes this uh, writer as a true force in American literature. And then finally, the last book on the list is Alan Darka's Children by Alhird Bercherevic and it's uh, translated by Jim Dingley and Petra Reed. So this is described, uh, it's um, published by Scotland Street Press, and it's uh, described as a contemporary novel about a brother and a sister interned in a camp. Here, camp leaders teach children to forget their own language and speak the language of the colonizer. Because of this, leaders' use of drugs as well as surgery on the larynx to cure the illness of using the Belarusian language. When Alicia and Avi manage to escape, camp leaders pursue them. Now the children have to thrive for themselves in this adventure, which bears a likeness to an adult and literary Hansel and Gretel. And uh, one reviewer um, describes this as Kafkaesque with elements of cyberpunk. So I think all of those novels sound really, really fascinating. Um, the one I'm sort of most drawn to uh, first, um, as well as the books I have of Ghost in the Throat and Mordi, is Lot by Shala von Reinhold. So I think I'm going to order that right now from the, the publisher's website. Uh, but yeah, let me know if uh, you are interested in any of these books or if you've read any of them. Let me know your thoughts about them in the comments below. Um, but yeah, also uh, let me know if there's any book prizes that you're really excited and keen to follow this year. Uh, so thank you for listening to me and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.